Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine, reporting to you here today with Gabrielle Torres from the UC Cooperative Extension in Tulare Kings County, a viticulture farm advisor. Wanted to talk about, you know, the drought is obviously a big issue, and not only for our irrigation needs, but also the impact of this, of this weather it has on our pest and disease uh, trends and, and what we're going to do to manage them. So I wanted to see uh, from you, Gabrielle, if you could tell us what kind of pest pressure uh, we can expect or we're already seeing so far based on these um, the current weather conditions. Okay, now first I want to mention those, those diseases that are going to go down. So we expect with the dry condition and warm weather, uh, powdery mildew can go down. Also botrytis, I expect to see less botrytis in this year. But on the other hand, other diseases that depend on plant stress like trunk diseases, we're going to have more symptoms. So we can expect uh, more twin diseases, you can call it ESCA or other pathogens there are going to show up more symptoms on the plants. Also diseases like a sudden vine collapse. So this is the perfect weather to see the collapse. So the virus is in the plant, but the stress condition uh, that is replaced by the dry conditions and the warm weather, uh, less amount of water, water in, the, in the root system. So it's a perfect storm for for those kind of diseases. On the other hand, also past like leafhoppers population are gonna go faster, so we can expect an extra uh, reproduction, reproduction cycle this this year, so we're gonna see more uh, leafhoppers and mainly bugs. Right now, so I guess we're gonna be saving money on some pest control measures, but we're gonna have to divert that to others. Uh, yes, uh, uh, but this is like Powdery mildew, at least in table grape, is something that you don't want to see if the weather helps you to control. So maybe you're gonna go still going with your sulfur, but maybe you can. What you can do is expand the time of the sprays. You can maybe if the conditions are good for the for the plant and restrictive for the pathogen, you can open your cycles from 10 days to 14 if it's really intense or maybe up to 21 if, you, if the disease pressure is very low. So for, for diseases, I expect you can reduce the amount of, of fungicides, but for past, I maybe I think maybe you need to increase. So it's, it's a balance. Maybe it's not going to save too much money. What you need to do is uh, keep, uh, keep track of what's going on in the field. I'm glad you mentioned sudden grapevine collapse because that is something that's that's uh, pretty well spread throughout the state. Uh, it's a disease complex, and we are concerned about you know the, the the conditions being just right for that to occur this year. And if you lose your your vines in the middle of the season, like that that's going to be a, having a big impact on the vineyard. And so, would you say just kind of trying to keep stress on the uh, vines to a minimum to help prevent that from happening? Yes, that, that, that's the challenge that we have is because there is a limitation on the water amounts that we're getting from the district. Some of the wells are very low, so, but in these really hot conditions and dry conditions, what we have to is reduce the stress that the plant has. So improve with watering, uh, improve irrigation, improve uh, if you have a way to put uh, some organic matter that can help to, to to keep the soil moisture is going to help and especially in those sandy soils you need to to maybe not apply more water but apply more frequently so that the vine never gets to a dry condition that is stressed and, and the virus uh, get in action with all the plant genetics and the plant just collapse. Well thank you Gabriel, thanks for the update and I wish there was more we could do to uh to help mitigate some of these problems, but water is, is critical for growing our crops here. So read more about these things in American Vineyard Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.